welcome back. If you are new, welcome along to the build. I am currently installing the lighting wire circuit. Today I'm going to start with the tail lights and the park lights. These both use the same bulb, so I need to split the wire that comes out of the light unit. It has taken me about an hour or so to figure out exactly how the button layout is going to be on the center console. I have lights dipped, headlights on and park lights to run through all of the same bulbs. To keep it nice and simple this is how it's going to be laid out. The first button is just the rear lights, both tail lights and the number plate bulbs. The dip will be the next button, the main beam will be on the next button and it will be linked to the button on the steering wheel so I can flash. The next button down will be the fog light at the rear. Then I'll have the park lights in the front headlights on that button. In essence when I'm using the lights that one has to be on all the time then I can run the different setups in unison. Now I just need to figure out where I got up to with the first plan and then I can course correct. I've just extended the earth and the power that go to the number plate bulbs. This means I can wrap them in some tape and thread it down into the chassis. Then it will come out in the corner. It will be nice and out the way when the panel goes in this area. You may have noticed all the scratches on this Leica lens. I may regret this but I will try and remove them now. I think it's marginally better. I managed to get all the wires connected to the lights at the back of the car last night. I've just run the loom as neat as I can for now using cable ties. Now I have a bunch of wires coming from the back of the car. I need to figure out which ones I'm going to put to which relay. I am yet to receive the plugs that I ordered for the near side headlights. I have got the wiring in place ready to wire up once I get them. And just like that, I spoke too soon. I have just received the remaining plugs in the post. I can get them fitted to the headlight and then I can finish all the wiring at the front end that will go down through the bulkhead. I think I definitely damaged the lens when I tried to clean it. Anyway, I've finished the wiring on the offside headlight. The next job is to trace it all the way to the near side. I'm going to use cable ties as I've done before, get all the wiring nice and neat. The plan the route is going to take across the front of the car. Before we get any further with the loom in the front of the car, I need to test the windscreen wiper motor. There is an earth and three different wires on the plug for the motor. I can only get two speeds to work. To be honest, I can't remember how many speeds there are on a Peugeot 206. I'm happy with two. turned into a late one last night so I didn't do a lot of filming on the front end here. So just really quickly a recap, the offside indicator along with the earth wire is wired across the offside. 
This because it links up to the indicator on the wing, which is over there, and it makes sense to take that route around the engine bay. The rest of the wiring for the headlights all run across the front of the clip here, and splice into the wiring of the near side headlight. I have hardwired in the power and the earth for the horn, also the power and earth for the washer jet. That will sit here somewhere. This earth and power coiled up is for the spotlights. In the future, if I want to run them, they'll likely run up the inside of the bonnet and then come out on the top somewhere. So putting the wires into the loom now, it just makes it a lot easier in the future. I'm starting to make some progress now. I have joined all the wires that I installed in the front end to the power on the relays. Now I'm doing the trigger wires from the relays to the center console. <laughs> I've been off the build for a couple of days, I've had a dose of the man flu again. I have just been dosing up on Lemsip so I can crack on with some wiring. the interior light I thought it would be a good idea to have a diffused light rather than something shiny right in your eyes. I have four of these LED strips that I can turn up and down. I can choose how bright it is. I have a bunch of different colours I can choose from. I can have it pulsing if I really want to. If I really want to get crazy there's quite a few different settings. There are even some that are sound activated. As you can see I've got one that shines to the rear of the car up in the roll cage there. I've got one on the roof in front of the roll cage so it shouldn't dazzle the driver if they're sat back there. I have one down on the footwell so you can see when you're getting in and out of the car. Then I have one under the dash on the passenger side which generally helps illuminate the cabin. You can see the light at the front as I go up to where my head position will be. It's hidden behind the roll cage. The control I can just velcro to a position inside the car where it's handy. All I need to do when I get to the car in the dark is get the isolator switch on. Then I can use this control pad. You can see how well the inside of the car is illuminated. If I had one light in one specific place, say in the front there, it wouldn't give me any light towards the back of the car. So for on the go potential maintenance issues, it's a good thing to have this light set up. In order to get the light on top of the roll cage at the back, I needed to extend the wire by around 500 millimeters, just so I had enough to run it along the top of the roll cage and out to the center of the car. Next, I need to figure out how much power cable I need that goes from the battery to the isolator switch and from the isolator to the starter motor. As you can see on the stock Subaru, the distance between the positive terminal on the battery and the starter motor is very, very short. So I may have to up the thickness slightly of the cable to compensate for the extra length that will run down into the car. Using the same method that I use for the brake pipes, I'm going to run this cord up through the bulkhead and work out the length from the isolator to the starter motor. Next, the isolator back to the battery. As well as having the main power coming from the battery up to this isolator switch, I also need a decent sized cable that comes from the power out of the isolator that will come back to the battery. This is to allow me to use this buzz bar which will be on top of the battery. This will be used as the main power to the relays for the devices. So the power to the buzz bar will be controlled from the isolator switch so it can easily be disconnected in an emergency. That's it for another episode, if you liked it give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the build leave them in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.